I know. That's the thing. You know, we've had so many, obviously, horrible things um, to happen over the past several months. But these milestones, when you're a 16-year-old and you've been looking forward to driving, that's a monumental um, event in one's life. Have you given them advice? I mean, I, I think I'm thinking about what would I say to my 16-year-old? Like, you'll have so many years ahead of you to drive. What do you tell them to comfort them? You know, the truth is my kids are far more resilient and far more yeah. patient than I am. I want us to move on. I want us to get back to work. I feel like if you can go to Ralph's, you can go to work. You know, I, I tend to be a little bit um, pushy, I guess, that way. And they're very patient. They're teaching me a lot, and especially because this time is so tumultuous. It's not as if we just have COVID. We have all of the wonderful protests, um, the awareness that they're sharing with me and with everyone. It just, I feel like they will never forget this time of 2020. And I, and I guess it put into perspective there's a lot more important things for them than uh, driving or a birthday party. And even for my oldest daughter, graduating, she was devastated. I'm not going to lie. She, her school closed yeah. down, Bennington closed down, and she brought six uh, students here, and they made an art commune here, and they all did different projects and sculpture, and uh, you know, that's fantastic. But they didn't get that moment of validation walking across the stage. Yeah. But yet they're all out marching and they're all out protesting and they're feeling like they are um, really valuable citizens of the world right now by being able to raise their voices. And I think, okay, that's something maybe more important than that walk across the stage is that march down the street. Well, listen, the other obviously popular show you're with, The Morning Show, after working for The Today Show for 10 years, of course, I was glued to The Morning Show. And you're going into a second season when the pandemic hit. Will that resume? Are you coming back? What's the latest there? I'd like to think that I'm coming back. Uh, my character's kind of loosely based on Maureen Dowd, who's just such a firecracker. And I can yes, only imagine that the next story is the takedown of the entire network. So I would like to think that my character has something to do with it, but it was uh, it was really an interesting show. I wonder, did you feel it resonated? Did you recognize the feelings, the atmosphere? This was brilliant. I finally sat down with my husband and watched it. And, you know, when you think about everything that has transpired uh, prior to and revealed about the business and where we are now, honestly, I think that the storyline for the morning show could even go into the diversity conversation that we're having in TV beyond gender. And that may be season three of the morning show. Since I was the first black woman to ever host the Today Show in the weekday, I'm like, there's a whole nother layer to the conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. I hope they do. Even, even in Barclays, I would like the diversity to be more of a part of Barclays. I want there to be a gay character. I want there to be a black character. And I want the focus to be on what that character is going through. And of course, it'll be authentic because it's Nat Geo, um, and it, it will likely be heartbreaking. Well, I, yeah, you know, it is. But the, the roles that you've taken on, especially in the two very different shows there, just are illuminating and, and wake us up. And that is why you're one of the greatest actresses of our time. And I appreciate you joining us. Uh, good luck with the kids and all that they are going through. They can't have a better mother to navigate them through these um, unprecedented times we're living in. So, Marsha, thank you so much. Congratulations on everything. Thank you so much. Take care.